element. If it's a compound, you'd separate them, you'd multiply by how much you have, and then you would add them at the end. Also, as a reminder, your unit for molar mass is always grams per mole, G over MOL. Grams per mole is your unit for molar mass. Again, you would figure out the mass based on the periodic table of your element, multiply it by how much of the element that you have. Figuring out molar mass is the first step when it comes to learning about the gas laws. We have several gas laws. We'll only learn about four today. The other two I'll teach you at the beginning of next week. So these are gas laws. Figuring out, calculating your molar mass is the first step in doing something in relation to this. As a reminder, your gas laws have different, different variations, but you will see the same letters. For instance, these four have the same three letters. You'll notice that pressure is P, volume, V, temperature is T. So you'll notice that it's P, V, and T in your formulas. When you're using that, just a quick reminder, that's what it stands for. P is always pressure, V is always volume, T is always temperature for your gas laws. Then also remember that your units are important. Pressure is the hardest to remember. If you're not familiar, eventually you will become familiar with the practice. Pressure has many different units. We use four of these for the worksheets. We have ATMs, which is atmospheres, TOR, you have KPA, which is kilopascals, and then MMHG, which is millimeters of mercury. Anytime you see any of these four, you know that it is in reference to pressure when it comes to the gas laws. Please remember that these four are always pressure. They can have different variations. When you see them, they are pressure in your word problems. Then volume, although it has many units in math and science, the ones we will use for this class for chemistry is liters. So if you see centimeters cubed, for example, milliliters or any other unit of volume, you have to remember to convert them. We've learned that in class already this past semester. Remember to convert. You always want to convert volume to liters in order to get your right answer. I would suggest you convert immediately and not at the end in order to avoid confusion about your answer. Convert at the beginning as soon as you recognize that the volume is in the wrong unit. Likewise, for temperature, you have to remember to convert. We have three different temperature scales. You have Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin. We'll use Fahrenheit and Celsius for our everyday lives, for the weather, for example. But in a laboratory or in a science class, you would use Kelvin for the most part, especially with gas laws. If you don't remember, we've learned how to convert uh, your temperature scales. For example, if you have Celsius, you would add 273 in order to get your Kelvin. That's just a reminder. If you see your problem has Celsius, then you have to add 273 in order to get Kelvin. If you don't use Kelvin as part of your temperature and your formulas, you're going to get this wrong. Remember to convert to Kelvin. You always use Kelvin for your temperature scale in when it comes to gas laws. Pressure, volume, temperature, PVT. Recognize the units. You have these written down already for you. They're part of your notes. It's something just to refresh your memory. When it comes to your laws, you'll notice once again, these are variations. They all have P, V, or T, which we know what they stand for already. Once you notice there's four different ones, we have Boyle's Law, Charles Law, Gay-Lussac's Law, and the Combined Gas Law. These are these four right here. You'll notice that my pressure and volume are the first ones always on the left of the equal sign. Pressure one, volume one. Pressure one, volume one. It's always on the left. You'll notice that temperature is different. They are always switched. Temperature two comes first. Temperature two comes first. Temperature two comes first. That's just how the law works. You have to remember, although these are not fully memorized yet, as you continue to practice with them, you'll be familiar that pressure and volume one goes on that side, temperature one goes on this side, and so forth. Remember to always, always, always reference these formulas when you're doing these problems. Also remember that you may see different variations of this formula even on your worksheets or online. You'll see that sometimes they'll have a K constant or they'll be inversely related, which means that they're in a fraction form. This is the best and the simplest way to get it done. The other ways, the other methods are also correct. So are these, these are the simplest ones. It's just simple multiplication and division and conversion if necessary. So 
familiarize yourself with these four formulas in order to get these problems done. Once again, pressure one, volume one on that side, temperature one on this side. Notice how temperature two is on that side of your equal sign, temperature one is on this side for all of them. P1, V1, P2, V2, P1, T2, P2, T1, and so forth. These are all on the worksheets I gave you either way. Now, how do you apply this? Remember to always convert at the beginning. Once again, if you have milliliters, cubic centimeters, convert that to liters, and then convert Celsius to Kelvin if necessary. If you want to reference the worksheets I gave you, the ones that have the names of the laws at the top, I'll just give you an example, first of all, of the one that says Boyle's Law. I know it's difficult to see, but it's Boyle's Law. I'm just going to read the problem and put it up here instead of writing it out. So it says, a sample of oxygen gas occupies a volume of 250 milliliters. Immediately you'll recognize that is not the correct unit. You need liters and not milliliters. As we've already learned, in order to convert milliliters to liters, you just move your decimal to the left three times. So 250 milliliters is actually technically 0.25 liters. If it was 250, I've moved my decimal to the left three times. That is the simplest shortcut to converting milliliters to liters. Now, because that is my first volume that is mentioned, I know that is V1. Now I'm gonna read the rest of the problem to figure out which one of my formulas I'm going to use. It also mentions 740 tours. You may not be fully familiar with what a tour is, but you do know that it is a unit of pressure. So I do have my volume and my pressure. Let's continue reading. It says, what volume will it occupy at 800 torr pressure? Notice how temperature is not mentioned at all. We're assuming that the temperature is constant, which means that it has not changed. Therefore, it is essentially irrelevant, at least for solving the problem. So because you're not using temperature, you're going to reference to your first formula. This is boils up pressure and volume. It does not matter if V or P are switched as long as one is on the left, two is on the right, as long as you follow the formula. So you have your first volume. Let's put our first pressure next to it. And our first pressure is 740 torr. equals and then we're going to put our second pressure and our second volume now it says what volume will it occupy so that's what you're solving for you don't have v2 or volume 2 so you're going to leave it alone place it there and you do have a second pressure it says at 800 torrs so you're going to place right there once again 800 torrs the rest of your problem is simple algebra excuse me which means that you're just going to multiply and divide. You're gonna treat this like an X when it comes to algebra, you wanna isolate it, you wanna solve for it, so you wanna leave it alone by dividing, first of all, this sign by 800 in order to avoid this. You do remember that when these are placed together, it's calling for you to multiply, which means that what I do to one side, you're going to do to the other side. I'm gonna copy the 800 towards on this side, towards also is on this side. Notice how the units cancel out, we know that. Then we want to multiply 0.25 by 740 and then you're going to divide by 800. So of course you can use a calculator if you like, that's 0.25 times 740. Then when you get your answer, you're gonna divide by 800. You're gonna figure out that your answer is 0.23. Remember that for gas laws in our class, we're asking for only two decimal places. You look at the third one in order to see whether or not you need to round. My third number was a one, so therefore it stays a three. Remember that I have to place my correct unit at the end of the problem, which means that I'm only left with liters, which is a unit of volume. The problem does say what volume would it occupy Therefore, I know that I'm doing this correct because only volume is left. So my answer for the first one would be 0.23 liters. That is following my formula. The simplest thing about this is the formulas are in front of you. You know what pressure is, you know what volume is, you know what temperature is, you know how to locate it. 
The only thing you have to figure out is what am I solving for? That's the one thing you want to focus on. And the first problem, it immediately told us what volume would it occupy? Because that was really in front of us as we know that volume is what we're solving for. So once again, stick to your formulas. If for whatever reason, once again, your volume is in the wrong unit, your temperature is in the wrong unit, please remember to convert it when necessary. The same thing applies to all of my laws. If volume is taken out, you would use this formula. If pressure is not mentioned, you would use this formula. If you notice that all three are mentioned, you might want to use a combined gas law. Remember to look for the keyword constant. If it says pressure is constant, volume is constant, temperature is constant, they're both the same. T1, T2, P1, P2, V1, V2, they're the same. If you were to apply it to the formula, they would cancel each other out. If you want to still try it, go ahead. It just saves you an extra step. A constant means that it is irrelevant when it comes to these type of formulas. When we find the R constant in my ideal gas law, that's different. We will have to pay attention to that. These are my first four. Once again, Boyles, Charles, De La Sachs, and Combined Gas Law. When uh, we have the next video for the next two laws, which is ideal gas law and Graham's law of effusion, we'll notice that that's a little bit different. We'll teach you that separately, but these are the first four. Once again, look for the correct units, look for the right conversion if necessary, and follow the correct formula. Place it in the correct order and it always works. Remember that the numbers next to each other means you're gonna multiply, if you want to isolate your V2, P2, T1, whatever it is, divide on this side. What is done on one side must be done on the other side. Once you multiply across, then divide, that gives me my answer. The same applies for all of the four laws. Remember to multiply across first, then divide. If you input this in your calculator in this order, some calculators may not catch that you want to divide first and multiply. It really depends. You want to be careful. So I would simplify it first. First multiply, get your answer, then divide and move forward from that. This is uh, for the quiz on next Wednesday. This is just a uh, beginning in order for you to understand it so you can practice it, get all the practice and the worksheets done. But this is not going to be quiz till Wednesday. You still have the rest of this week and Monday and Tuesday of next week to familiarize yourself with this. The quiz tomorrow, March the 20th, is on molar mass, which you learned that uh, this past week already. Refresh your memory on both. Molar mass will play a role when it comes to the ideal gas law. That's our next video. Please make sure that you familiarize yourself with molar mass. You practice it. Take the quiz tomorrow. Then that will apply to our next law. When it comes to Graham's law of infusion, We'll have to also focus on the molar mass and you need to be familiar with that once again as well. So if you have any questions, please let me know, message or text me. And uh, if any of the problems don't make sense or your 